everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Front. As always, you can check out my website at leadtheteam.net for free sales training, for motivational content, and for leadership tips. And if you would, you can check out the podcast. Those are on just about every podcast platform out there. Those are on Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, iTunes, you name it. Just type in The Front and Mike Phillips and it should come right up. And whether you are watching this episode or listening to it today, please make sure that you participate in the comments down below. Share your thoughts and share your opinions, as often that's going to lead to a really excellent future show. So today I'm asking the question, are you on autopilot? Right now, on the front. Thanks for tuning in to Lead the Teams, the front. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and join me today. This is The Front. My name is Mike Phillips, and I will be your host. And I'm asking the question, are you on autopilot? So I am doing this episode live. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's certainly off of my autopilot program. So I'll take a look at the comments as we go through the process here. And if anybody has something to share, if you have questions, if you have opinions, please, by all means, pop them in that sidebar, and I'd be lo- I would love to have you participate. So... When I'm asking the question, are you on autopilot? First off, I've talked before a lot about how it's important to have a plan and how you should have a process to go with that plan. And routine in general is good for many reasons. We get accustomed to doing the same or similar things. It takes the guesswork out of things, right? You don't have to think through it. It's just automatic. And when there's less guesswork, there's less decision making. And one of the things that psychologically can happen is it will improve your mood. It will make you more excited, more pumped up because you know what's coming. So, excuse me, (laughs) it gets you more excited and more pumped up because you know what's coming. And when you know what to expect, taking off on that, it removes fear from the equation. When you know what's coming, you can take the fear out of it. I'll give you an example for sales, for example. When customers come into the showroom, normally they come in and they have high anxiety, high fear. They're looking for somebody that they feel like they can trust. They're looking for a good deal. They're wanting to know that they can work in tandem with somebody. So you know how to take the fear out of that as we're talking about, are you on autopilot today? What you can do to take the fear out of it is simply tell the person what is going to happen. Now, that may seem a little bit cheesy. Like in my stores, we do a five-step sales process. So it's, you know, step one is the greeting. Step two is wants and needs evaluation. Step three, you present the car. Then you demo the car and then you close the deal. And we get so accustomed to it in sales that we just do it. We, We autopilot on through it. So my suggestion is when a customer comes in, how invasive would it be? And I don't think it would. I think this would take the fear out of it. If you just told the customer what was going to happen, if you said, look, Mr. Customer, it's nice to meet you. My name is Mike. Here's what's going to happen. First, I'm going to greet you. And hey, we already got through that part. So congratulations. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what your wants and needs are, and we're going to establish what you're looking for in searching for a vehicle. Then hopefully I'm gonna have something that fits that and I'm gonna present the car to you. Then I'm gonna demo it with you, we're gonna go on a drive, and then you know what, Mr. Customer, at the end of of this, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, I'm gonna ask you to buy the car a whole bunch of times. Now, don't you think that would take the fear out of it for the customer? I do. Now, you may think it's a little bit cheesy and it wouldn't necessarily work, that process would not be effective on everybody. But it is something that if you just did it sometimes, you know, if you had the right rapport with the customer, it may help ease it. It would just take it out and and take the fear out and make it so that the customer will ride along with you. They'll go shotgun with you and say, hey, you know what? This is easy peasy. I just want to buy a car. And so try that sometimes. Tell people what's going to happen. And here's here's one of the things. If you step through that process, I don't want you to forget that the customer's situation is unique. Each person's situation is unique. And so what happens on the salesperson side, we often will say, well, this is how I'm supposed to do it. I got to do these five steps. I got to get through all five of them. 
And at the same time, you need to treat the customer as a person. You can't just be cookie cutter. So though you may tell them, you know, here's the 20,000 foot view. Here's the one, two, three, four, five steps that we're going to go through in this process. It doesn't mean it has to be in this perfect mold and everything has to be identical every time for every customer. On the flip side of this discussion, too much routine can create complacency. If you're doing the same things over and over and over and over again, you're not growing. And taking that last example, if you're a salesperson and you're doing identical things every single time, you forget the uniqueness of the customer and you forget the uniqueness of what their process is. So I got some people tuning in to join me. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. I do really appreciate it. And again, if you have questions, shoot them there in the sidebar. I'd love to have some interaction and, and have a discussion on it. So we're talking about are you on autopilot? So as you get on autopilot, you can become absorbed with things that are the same. We get numb. Then things that once invigorated us, that excited us, that turned us on and fired us up, sometimes those things become mundane. They become same. So my, my podcast, this podcast, for example, I love doing this podcast. I enjoy it. It's my release. I have an opportunity to, to get in and do my broadcasting and get participation from people and feel like I can make an impact on the people that are in my circle. What happens, though, is I got accustomed to recording my podcast. And it, just because that's something that's comfortable for me. I like the fact when I record my podcast, I can go in, I can make mistakes or I can mess up or I can say the wrong thing and I still have the opportunity to edit it. Plus, when you're not doing a show live such as this one, it allows a, a higher resolution and I like the higher resolution video. So it's one of those things that I, I, I felt that I had fallen into that trap. At least, actually, it was a discussion my wife and I had. We talked about it. And she says, hey, you should try something different. Break out of your comfort zone. Break out of the norm. Do some live videos again. So here I am. <laughs> so and, and here's the thing. The last, and, and I know I'm on episode number 69 today. The last videos that I've done, that I've edited, I've done 99 recorded videos in a row. So I was like, hey, that's a really good idea. I'll go ahead and break out of it. I'm going to do some live episodes and it could be a lot of fun. The benefit is that then we get live interaction and it's it's very real. You know, if, if a mistake happens or uh, while we get into a discussion, then, it, you know, regardless of what it is that's going on, it's it's very real. You know, it's very straightforward. So I got some questions coming in here. It says, <laughs> like I am. Okay. Um, so uh, the last few episodes of this podcast, I've done them live. And it's even though it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, I'm not a live video person. I'm okay with live radio, right? Because even right now, if you're tuned in and watching, you can see I talk with my hands. <laughs> and so on radio, that's one of those things. I can be talking with my hands and flipping through pages and checking on what my notes are. And it's just a different environment on radio broadcast versus live video. So here's another practical real life example as I'm kind of coming through this episode of are you on autopilot this is a practical and real life example of when we fall into our own automation of the people that are watching this right now or if you're tuned in and listening I've got a question for you if you drive to work or you drive to school or church or one of those places you go to the same place every day right let me ask you the question. Do you remember your drive from Friday morning? Now, it was just two days ago. Do you remember the drive from Friday morning? It's recent. It's not like I'm asking you to remember back in 2017 or 16 or 15. I'm just asking for two days ago, Friday. Do you remember it? And what happens is most likely many of us do not recall that drive. Because what happens over time as we learn, our brains tune stuff out. We get onto autopilot. We end up doing the same things kind of over and over again. And what happens is what used to be an individual light or an individual intersection or individual street names, they get lumped together and they become the drive, 
right? It's no longer individual pieces that our brain is processing. And what we focus on is the whole journey, just the whole thing. And so it becomes one, it is the drive. And then you start asking yourself, because you've done this, we kind of put into that drive trance, if I'm talking about Friday morning's drive to work, you get into that trance and you think to yourself, man, was that light green or was it red? Did I just blow through that intersection? You know, we've all done it before. I've done it. I know many people have done it from time to time when you start to question, gosh, I, I don't even remember. And you may make it from your home to work and stop and think and say, man, I don't even remember the journey. I don't remember what time of day it was. I don't remember the scenery. It's because it all became just one piece from home to work. It's just the drive. They get lumped together. So here's my challenge for you this week. Get off your autopilot. Change things up. Try and find a new way to do something. If you're somebody that does recorded videos or recorded podcasts, try doing a live one. Just get out of that comfort zone and grow a little bit. If you're accustomed to doing the live ones and just flipping it on and going, try and take the time to slow down and record something and then learn the editing to it because that can be fun. It teaches a new skill. You learn a new way to do something, a new approach. If you're in sales, there's been a big debate in automotive sales right now between texting and email and phone calls and what's the best? Is it best to be you know, face-to-face, in person? If you're a texting person, get out of your comfort zone. Pick up the phone and call, right? Take the time to plan. Get your script out. Take the time to plan. Pick up the phone and call and engage with somebody on a different level if that's the level they want to engage in. If you're a phone person and somebody's emailing you back and forth or they're texting you, take the time to slow down and come up with a good quality text script so you can communicate back and forth with that person. And here's the thing. You will often default to what you're good at. Like if I'm a phone person, I'm going to default and say, well, I know what I can do with my scripts on the phone. So it may cause you to get out of your comfort zone and reach out to somebody else who has some expertise. Make a connection with somebody and communicate with them to get some ideas of, well, what would I say on a text for this scenario? And as you do these things and you enlist other people and you engage and connect and and uh, just as you're communicating with other people, two things that that I think will come out of this. There's two significant things. One is you'll be blown away by the stuff that you learn and you start to incorporate and you start to get excited about because you'll go, man, I never thought of that before. But now that I'm using it, this is pretty awesome. The second thing that's going to come out of it is how awesome it is to actually connect with other people. Rather than just trying to depend on yourself and what it is that you know or Google or YouTube. You know, we have so many resources right now that and and this isn't a superficial social connection kind of thing. It's one of those that it'll give you an actual opportunity. Pick up the phone and connect with somebody. Go sit down and have a cup of coffee with someone and actually connect with them and kick ideas around. Look them in the face, you know, and have a real connection. And the, the, to me, those two things will come out of it. It's like you'll blow your own mind at what you can learn. And two, it'll blow your mind at how you can connect with others. And, and to me, that's a really good feeling. So that's my whole show for this week on this episode of The Front, asking you the question, are you on autopilot? And I'm going to look real quick at the if there, there are some comments because a few things have come in. Mostly people just tuned in and, and watching. And plus, I've got a new setup, so I don't know how well I can see people's comments. So for everybody that did take the time to tune in and join and watch this live, I sure appreciate it. If you're watching it later too, I'm up to about 15 minutes. Thank you so much for tuning in and investing your time with me watching or listening to another episode of The Front. It's awesome. Please make sure, give it a thumbs up if you got something out of this. Share it on your social media. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. All that would be really, really awesome. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Sure appreciate it. And until we speak next, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon.